Hello world, Sir Lawrence NZ here and welcome to my first of hopefully many Age of Empires 2 map overviews. And today I'm kicking things off with Serengeti in light of the upcoming Africa stage in the Escape Champions League. Serengeti is an extremely open and aggressive map that was added in the African Kingdom's expansion. The map also has a lot of unique features further encouraging aggressive playstyles. Before we go into detail however, here's the standard resources you can expect for the early game. 1 elephant, 8 goats, 4 orange bushes, 5 zebra, and 3 ostriches along with 2 small but close gold and stone piles. With that out of the way, let's look into the various important features this map has to offer. The woodlands on Serengeti are made up of 150 to 200 wood trees sporadically grouped together to create your woodline. These often have gaps in them however, and any extensive chopping renews the issue. The result of this is an abundance of raiding opportunities furthered by some navigationally challenged lumberjacks ending up on the wrong side of your woodlines. Moving on to terrain, Serengeti has a max elevation of 5, with the town centre always spawning on the bottom. Because of this, your town centre often appears in a crater, presenting a substantial challenge when defending throughout the game. But there's more. Serengeti has patches of quicksand which doesn't allow building foundations to be laid, substantially limiting your ability to wall or boom. These patches cover roughly 7% of the map. In addition to quicksand, there's cracked earth covering a further 12% of the map where buildings take an additional 20% damage. Because of all this, relying on walls is inherently risky, meaning that towers actually become somewhat of a necessity to repel your enemies. Lastly, there's some medium sized ponds scattered around the map with scarce fishing, so fishing might only be viable with Malay fish traps. Before we move on to resources however, it's important to understand how resource spawn mechanics work. Spawn distances referenced in the map code are minimums and maximums in at least one direction from the middle of the town centre, meaning that from a top down perspective resources spawn in a hollowed out square where the corners can be further than advertised. With that out of the way, your starting goats will spawn within 9 to 11 tiles of the town centre and your secondary goats will spawn within 14 to 17 tiles, which is far more forgiving than Arabia with its maximum 26 tile distance for the sheep. Your zebra and ostriches also spawn a lot closer than deer, coming in at a range of 12 to 16 tiles between the two of them compared to Arabia's 18 to 23 tile range. And while you only have one elephant, it spawns between 13 and 16 tiles away compared to boars on Arabia spawning between 16 and 22 tiles away. Lastly, there's three less orange bushes which don't quite spawn as far away compared to Arabia. For your main golden stone, a close patch of each spawns between 7 and 12 tiles away, containing only 4 mines each. Your secondary golden stone piles spawn between 10 and 16 tiles only containing 3 mines each. Your extra golden stones will spawn independently at least 30 tiles away from the town centre, containing 4 mines each for the gold and 3 for the stone. Extra golds and stones must also spawn at least 45 tiles away from the same extra resource type, with no applicable limit set outside these parameters. Therefore, because of the town centre exclusion zones, you typically get between 2-3 to three extra golds and stones per player, regardless of the map size. This can be substantially more than Arabia which only has two for the entire map in the spawn code. Do keep in mind however that the number of extra resources per player does tend towards two the larger the map and that there's no tertiary golds on Serengeti. For wood, you get five 150 wood acacia straggler trees and a bare minimum of an acacia wood line eight tiles away containing 20 trees loosely grouped together. However, there's typically two to four usable wood lines on most maps. Finally, there's laming, which is incredibly risky on Serengeti due to several factors. Not only are you contending with elephants' faster attack animations, but there's also only one elephant with the other being substituted for with ostriches and zebras. Because of this, failing to find and lame your opponent before the first lure is very difficult made even harder again with the closer elephant spawns helping your opponent to see the lame and subsequently deny it, leaving you with a heavily injured or dead scout hindering your potential to lure hunt or maintain map awareness. Anyways, 
Now that you have a thorough understanding of Serengeti as a map, we can discuss the best strategies. Due to a larger portion of huntable resources, earlier feudal age uptimes are more viable. This allows for some very potent early scout rushes from the Mongols, Magyars, Huns and Indians. With this in mind, there's a few strategies I wouldn't recommend for the map due to its highly aggressive nature, awkward walling opportunities and very few town centre locations. These strategies are things such as Drush Fast Castles, Straight Archer Flushes and anything relying on a boom. These strategies often have little to no map control between the early feudal age and the mid castle age, giving your opponents ample time to devastate your economy before you have a chance to retaliate. Additionally, most of the golds on Serengeti are extra golds, which are 30 or more tiles away from the town centre, meaning that your opponent won't be running out anytime soon. With these strategies in mind, here's some of the best civilizations in my opinion for Serengeti. Indians, Incas, Mongols, Aztecs, Magyars, Burmese, Spanish, Huns, Mayans, Malay, Malians and Ethiopians, all placed in an approximate ranking order with suggested strategies under each civilization and in the description down below. But it depends on Civ matchups. A few honourable mentions to this list would be the Berbers, Persians, Chinese and Slavs. With all of these civilizations not quite having the same levels of aggression to reach the top tier, while having an absolute ton to offer in a team situation provided the game drags out. Finally, there's one last aspect I'd like to cover surrounding team games, focusing priority players. With how open Serengeti is, teams can choose who they target to give them a massive advantage moving forward. For example, shutting down a Berber Night Rush or slowing down the post-imperial Mongols, both of these are massive wins for your team. Because of this, mobility and map control is key in giving your team the flexibility to capitalise on these opportunities. In summary, Serengeti holds a lot of depth and strategy centred on high aggression, as everything about this map is hurting a player's ability to play passively or defensively. Because of this, you can expect to see back-to-back -back exciting games on Serengeti, albeit a little frustrating when you miss a quick wall. With all the knowledge presented in this video, I encourage you to give Serengeti a shot and check out the Escape Champions League Africa stage which is featuring Serengeti in the map pool. But that just about does it for me. I've left some additional information in the description down below as well as a few links on getting into Age of Empires. Besides that, be sure to drop me a comment letting me know your thoughts on the series idea and please consider sharing this video around and subscribing to the channel to show your support for my future projects. Until next time, which probably won't be a year away. Cheers.